Faccio un sentito appello per la lotta a tutto campo contro gli abusi di minori nel campo sessuale come in altri campi, da parte di tutte le autorità e delle singole persone, perché si tratta di crimini abominevoli che vanno cancellati dalla faccia della terra. Questo lo chiedono le tante vittime nascoste nelle famiglie e in diversi ambiti delle nostre società. È giunta l'ora, pertanto, di collaborare insieme per sradicare tale brutalità dal corpo della nostra umanità, adottando tutte le misure necessarie già in vigore a livello internazionale e a livello ecclesiale. È giunta l'ora di trovare il giusto equilibrio di tutti i valori in gioco e dare direttive uniformi per la Chiesa, evitando i due estremi di un giustizialismo provocato dal senso di colpa per gli errori passati e della pressione del mondo mediatico, e di una autodifesa che non affronta le cause e le conseguenze di questi, di questi gravi delitti. The work of the Scottish Catholic Church in protecting, nurturing and cherishing children and vulnerable adults is not something carried out independently of Christ. It's also not merely inspired by the example of Christ. Rather, it is the risen Christ himself, through the power of the Holy Spirit, who protects and cherishes children and vulnerable adults through the work of the Church. In carrying out our safeguarding duties, we are Christ's hands and feet actively protecting those whom he has promised the Kingdom of Heaven. In God's Image was published in 2018 for two very specific purposes. It was written to explain how the Scottish Catholic Church makes every effort to protect children and vulnerable adults from harm and abuse. And it was written to direct those responsible for managing safeguarding within our communities and how to comply with our national safeguarding standards. In God's Image has now been revised and updated, and version 2 comes into force on the 8th of September 2021. Recognising that legislation, research and good practice are continuously evolving, it has been published as an online document, so that an up-to-date version is always accessible on the website of the Bishops' Conference of Scotland. Pope Francis calls on all baptised Catholics to respond to the personal and communal conversion that's needed to demonstrate a commitment to a culture of care that says never again to every form of abuse. This commitment will be shown when all responsible for safeguarding in the Church comply with the safeguarding standards of In God's Image, communicating by their actions that they adhere to the Church's core safeguarding message. we regard as our paramount concern the safety of children and vulnerable adults. The safeguarding work of the Church is primarily the work of Jesus the Lord, who loves all and cherishes those who are vulnerable. Thank you for your commitment to the Church. Whether you're watching this video as a volunteer for parish ministry, as a priest or religious, a seminarian, or in any other capacity, your contribution is unique and valued. As part of being recruited to your role, there are steps you will need to follow. It is likely that you will be asked to complete an application to the PVG scheme, provide references and attend mandatory induction training before being able to carry out your ministry. A small number of ministries may no longer require a PVG, but will still require safeguarding training. Our safe recruitment procedures help us to ensure that children and the most vulnerable are being cared for by people who will keep them safe. This forms part of our work to ensure that people, activities and locations are viewed through the lens of potential safeguarding risk. Our practices will develop and evolve in the light of our experience, research findings, changes in legislation and circumstances. For example, during the pandemic, we had to adapt safeguarding practices to include a surge in live streaming. 
we demonstrate zero tolerance of abuse. No abuse should ever be covered up or not taken sufficiently seriously. Requiring mandatory induction training for all volunteers, clergy, religious and employees means that everyone knows what to do if they have concerns about or receive an allegation about abuse. Throughout In God's Image, expectations of high standards of conduct are made explicit for everyone involved in safeguarding in our communities. IGI version 2 includes a new detailed section on how clergy and religious can protect and safeguard the lives of children and vulnerable adults in particular ways. We report all allegations to the statutory authorities. We inform the statutory authorities of all allegations of abuse. Our mandatory reporting policy has not changed with the revision of In God's Image. It means that we must refer all allegations of abuse to Police Scotland. This includes non-recent allegations and allegations involving people who are now deceased. In May 2019, Pope Francis issued a motu proprio, in other words, a legal document containing new instructions for dioceses around the world on how to respond to abuse. It included the need for mandatory reporting, providing a papal endorsement of the Scottish Catholic Church's safeguarding procedures. We show compassion for all who have suffered experience of abuse. Looking back to the past, no effort to beg pardon and to seek to repair the harm done will ever be sufficient. Looking ahead to the future, no effort must be spared to create a culture able to prevent such situations from happening, but also to prevent the possibility of their being covered up and perpetuated. The pain of the victims and their families is also our pain. In this video and throughout In God's Image, the word survivor is used to refer to people who have experienced abuse. However, we understand that not all people who have experienced abuse wish to identify this way. So care is always taken to establish how individuals wish to be described. As detailed in mandatory induction training, all volunteers are required to follow a specific procedure when they receive any allegation of abuse. Once the referral to the safeguarding advisor has been made, a survivor will be accompanied through the process by the advisor, whose role is to ensure that the survivor has all the support and assistance they need. In God's Image expands on how someone who has suffered abuse or who is making an allegation on behalf of another person can expect to be treated. They will be treated with respect and compassion by any church personnel involved. They can expect the allegation to be dealt with appropriately and confidentially. They will be listened to carefully and offered information and support, including access to counselling which is independent of the Catholic Church. We acknowledge and learn from our past failings. We have realised that these wounds never disappear and that they require us forcefully to condemn these atrocities and join forces in uprooting this culture of death. These wounds never go away. The heart-wrenching pain of these victims, which cries out to heaven, was long ignored, kept quiet or silenced. But their outcry was more powerful than all the measures meant to silence it. The experiences and voices of survivors of abuse are welcomed as we seek continuously to improve our safeguarding procedures. While contact with survivors is primarily to ensure their welfare, their perspective on safeguarding is valuable and is being actively sought through conversations with survivors, leading in time to the establishment of a national survivor reference group. We open our safeguarding procedures to independent scrutiny. External independent reviews of safeguarding in all Scottish dioceses have been underway since 2019, leading to commitments from each diocese to respond appropriately to the recommendations emerging from the reports published following these reviews. We provide training and support for all who are responsible for safeguarding. 
all those responsible for safeguarding in the church are called to work in solidarity to respect and safeguard the dignity of all persons. St Paul reminds us in his first letter to Corinthians that all Christians through baptism are members of the body of Christ. When the most vulnerable among us are harmed, when their dignity is abused in any way, the impact extends to the whole body of Christ, precisely because we are one body. We are all called to use our gifts and talents to cherish and protect one another. Mandatory safeguarding training seeks to equip all who work with children and vulnerable adults in our communities to look at our ministries and duties, whatever they may be, through a safeguarding lens. This means we must consider how to understand risk, how to manage risk and how to reduce risk and how to create environments which are safe. The first basic level of training ensures that people can confidently identify safeguarding concerns and know how to respond appropriately and compassionately to concerns and disclosures of abuse. The second level of training ensures that people can view people, places and activities through the lens of safeguarding risk, empowering them to ensure that their duties are carried out safely. Safeguarding risk assessments are now expected to be carried out annually and training will help you to do this confidently and competently. Further training specific to individual ministries seeks to deepen expertise, skills and knowledge. Everyone must continue to engage in safeguarding training to ensure that our safeguarding practice is underpinned by a developed understanding and relevant skills. All training is provided as part of a national framework to ensure a consistency of both content and quality and will be coordinated by the new Scottish Catholic Safeguarding Standards Agency with the support of a safeguarding training advisory group. The pandemic in 2020 and 2021 led to the introduction of online training. This proved to be a useful forum for rural areas in particular and led to more training opportunities being developed in ways that enabled more people to attend. Further development for such online training is being actively considered. In God's Image now specifies minimum training requirements for different groups of people. A new safeguarding learning network will foster learning from national and international forums research and expertise to provide an ongoing, continuously updated forum for learning. Together we can commit to continuous improvement in our safeguarding practice. Without the active participation of all the Church's members, everything being done to uproot the culture of abuse in our communities will not be successful in generating the necessary dynamics for sound and realistic change. Working together is critical in ensuring that all parishes are safe, nurturing environments. Parish priests work with dedicated safeguarding coordinators within their parishes. Parish teams work with diocesan teams to ensure they have access to the most up-to-date knowledge and advice. In religious communities, safeguarding link coordinators advise and support community members to develop their safeguarding skills and expertise. Annual safeguarding audits carried out in every parish, religious community, Catholic organisation and diocese are intended to enable reflection on the current safeguarding practices and to inform action plans that direct the year ahead. Parishes are supported by diocesan teams and dioceses and religious communities are supported by the National Safeguarding Standards Agency to developing annual action plans that will bring about improvements. Christians are called through their baptism to see and to honour the image of God in each human being, to recognise and to cherish the innate dignity and worth of each person created by a loving God. We are all called to protect and defend others from violence, exploitation, abuse and corruption. We should understand, therefore, that what we now call safeguarding, how we keep children and vulnerable adults safe within our Catholic community, comes from the very heart of God's love made incarnate in his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Uh, 
uh, on behalf of all my fellow bishops, I'm delighted uh, to have this chance to express our deep appreciation for the commitment of so many people, uh, clergy, religious, employees, lay employees, lay volunteers, uh, so many who work hard to keep everyone in our church safe and protected. Uh, we're very conscious of the significant efforts that have been made to improve our safeguarding practice over the last years and to develop uh, that culture of care which we really want to see permeating all our dioceses and parishes and religious institutes and, and organisations, our whole uh, Catholic life really. And we know that the Holy Father wishes no effort to be spared as we continue, he says, to learn from the bitter lessons of the past and to look with hope towards the future. An important part of that future will be shaped by the publication of the revised version of In God's Image, In God's Image version 2. So we chose to publish the first version, you will remember, ad experimental, ad experimentum on a trial basis so that we could learn uh, as learn from from our practice of gradually introducing uh, safeguarding standards. And as you have seen, uh, IGI in God's Image version 2 is constructed around these same standards and it provides guidance that is built on uh, the, the developing good practice in safeguarding. So the bishops are grateful to uh, everyone who has contributed to the revision of In God's Image and uh, also to the development of the resources and training that will accompany it and underpin it and help us to move, as it were, from the printed page into real life. So I warmly encourage you to become familiar with the revised text and to take part in the training that is necessary uh, to support you in your own safeguarding work for the good of those we serve. So may God bless you and guide your work in safeguarding and may this new version of IGI in God's image uh, be a real help to us all as we move forward in this area. God bless you all. Thank you.